Twitch is the most popular live streaming platform on the internet. Every month, over 7 million people from around the world use it to stream themselves doing, well, all sorts of things, but there's always been an emphasis on video games. The name Twitch comes from Twitch gameplay, which is when you have to react to something really fast while playing a game. At any given time, millions of people are tuning in to watch their favorite streamers. Some of the biggest ones can have hundreds of thousands of people watching them at the same time. Simply put, live streaming has quickly grown into a multi-billion dollar industry and Twitch is the primary place to do it. However, despite its unprecedented popularity, Twitch has been dealing with a number of issues that have contributed to uncertainty concerning the future of the company. I am not saying it is going to shut down anytime soon, I want to be clear about that, but there may be cause for concern as it moves forward. So in this video, I want to outline what I believe to be some of the bigger issues facing Twitch. The two people that are most responsible for creating the platform are Emmett Shear and Justin Kahn. In 2005, while attending Yale University, they worked together to create an online calendar application called Kiko that proved to be somewhat successful. But after about a year, they wanted to move on to other projects, so they sold the business on eBay, of all places, for $258,000. The next project was called Justin.TV, where they teamed up with a few others to essentially create an internet-based reality show where Justin Kahn would live stream every every moment of his life. It was being called life casting. Maybe not the most consistently entertaining show, but it was such a revolutionary, unique idea that it quickly gained an audience. After a few months, they retooled the website to allow users to broadcast themselves over it, establishing different stream categories like music or animals. Over the next few years, the two most popular categories emerged to be sports and video games, but the sports category was problematic because it was mostly people illegally broadcasting copyrighted sporting events. They had to testify in front of a house committee, the company who owned the UFC filed a lawsuit against them, so it became a big hassle, but the video game category looked promising. The video game publishers expressed very few copyright issues and were overall cooperative in having people stream their games. In 2011, they turned the category into its own streaming site called Twitch TV, and that quickly became the company's primary focus. By 2014, it had grown to almost 50 million monthly users, making it one of the most popular sites on the internet and catching the attention of large technology companies like Yahoo and Google. In May of that year, it was being reported that Google was buying Twitch for $1 billion. Twitch was growing fast and wanted a larger company backing them that could help them scale things, and Google was already the owner of YouTube, so you could see how they would be compliments to each other. The deal never happened. It would have likely been blocked due to antitrust concerns, plus the people at Twitch felt that their platform would always be Google's secondary focus behind YouTube, which is probably a fair concern. Well, in August of that year, only three months later, it was announced that Twitch would be instead acquired by Amazon for $970 million, just a little bit less, but still their largest acquisition ever at the time. Amazon was already involved in gaming before that. They had bought the developer of Killer Instinct, created their own gaming studio, and were technically one of the top video game sellers. Amazon said that they made the deal to show its belief in the future of gaming, which has proven to be accurate. Over the next decade, Twitch grew their user base significantly and were greatly helped by the pandemic when everyone was inside watching stuff on the internet. Those numbers, however, have leveled off, and that leads me to the first issue I want to talk about. Twitch has been losing money. In January of 2024, their CEO, Dan Clancy, admitted that Twitch was not profitable and has been relying on money from their parent company, Amazon, to keep things running. It has been an ongoing problem, and that's where things start to get concerning, right? They are already leading the market, so how do they go about raising their revenue or lowering their costs. As Dan Clancy has said, delivering high definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive. Even utilizing Amazon's resources, they are still paying a lot of necessary expenses, and many of the ways that they have tried to lower expenses have been criticized, most recently layoffs. It turns out that they may have overestimated their growth rate following the pandemic and hired too many people. In 2023, they laid off 400 
employees, and in early 2024, it was another 500, representing over a third of their staff at that point. Around that same time, they shut down the service in South Korea, another unpopular decision, saying that it was too expensive to keep it going over there. I also want to mention that multiple key executives have been leaving the company, most notably co-founder Emmett Shear, who had served as CEO for 12 years before stepping down in 2023. He had recently become a father and said that he was ready to move on, but I don't know, you put it all together and it can form a potentially concerning picture. Next up on my list is the revenue split with the streamer. There are many different ways that Twitch streamers can make money. There's a virtual currency called Bits that users can send them, they could have sponsored streams, sell merchandise, they have affiliate links, but one of the primary sources is subscription revenue. Viewers can pay money to subscribe to a streamer to get custom emotes that they use in the chat, a badge beside their name, among other things, and I would say it is a great way to show support. There have been exceptions, but traditionally, the money the viewer pays for that subscription gets split 50-50 between the streamer and Twitch, and it has been argued that that is not a great ratio for the streamer. There have been petitions and numerous requests to change the ratio to 70-30, which is the standard for streamers on YouTube. There have been minor adjustments to the revenue split over the years, but the one with the most backlash was in 2022, when they announced that the select group of partners that were receiving the 70-30 split would be lowered to 50-50 after their first 100,000. I know that might not sound like a big issue, but the streamer saw it as a step in the wrong direction, believing that streamers are the core of the platform, and that's the last place that they should be looking to save money. In early 2024, they announced more changes to the revenue split that are still not quite what the streamers are asking for, but much more in their favor. But again, they are already losing money, so unclear what the smart decision is there. Somewhat related, in 2023, they announced new guidelines for the streamers regarding sponsors, mainly saying that burned-in advertisements were prohibited and they couldn't show logos that take up more than 3% of the screen size, a very specific number, and boy was that an unpopular announcement. You have to consider that sponsors are a big source of revenue for many streamers, and in many cases used to supplement that 50-50 revenue split. There was tremendous opposition to the new rules. Major streamers were threatening to leave the platform, so Twitch quickly apologized and said that they would rewrite those rules. But you see how a lot of the streamers are developing this hostile relationship with Twitch? They feel disrespected and just getting upset with the platform. Going back to the list, a quick one to follow up on the revenue split would be a major data breach. In 2021, it was big news when a hacker accessed their data due to an error in a Twitch server configuration change. Mainly, information was leaked about creator payouts from the past few years. Admittedly, probably not the most detrimental thing that could have happened to Twitch, but it still should not have happened. It made everyone question whether or not they could trust Twitch with their sensitive information, further straining their relationship with everyone who uses the service. Next up on my list is gambling. It has been a massive debate within the Twitch community over the past few years. It became a big thing where streamers would go online and bet large amounts of money. Even the rapper Drake was sponsored by an Australian online casino called Stake.com, where he would stream himself on Twitch betting a lot of money on their site. And then there was this other streamer that tricked a bunch of people in the community into giving him over $200,000 that was used to support his gambling habits. Clearly, there are ethical questions to consider involving all of this, one of the big ones being the influence on kids who access these streams. So after plenty of protest in 2022, Twitch banned the streaming of gambling sites like Stake.com that were not licensed in the US, leading me straight into the final issue on my list, competition. To this point, Twitch has always been far ahead of any competitor when it comes to live streaming video games. In 2015, shortly after that Google Twitch acquisition failed to happen, YouTube Gaming was launched as their answer to Twitch. But despite the traffic coming from YouTube and the more favorable revenue split and everything else, it has failed to catch up to Twitch. The audience is just not there, so in 2019, they shut down the YouTube Gaming app and integrated it into the traditional YouTube app. In 2016, Microsoft acquired a service that they renamed Mixer and even made big money contracts with some of the most popular streamers like Ninja and Shroud to go onto their platform, but again, they fell short. By 2020, they were only getting around 3% of the viewership of Twitch and decided to shut down. In 2022, following Twitch's announcement that they would ban gambling, the people behind one of those gambling sites, Stake.com, started their own streaming service to compete with Twitch. That is a bit of a twist, and they have been making quite an impact. Obviously, they don't have nearly as strong of a user base
space, but they have been growing faster than you might expect and have attracted notable streamers. Some creators are switching over to Kick because they have much more relaxed rules when it comes to gambling and all sorts of other craziness, and their revenue split is 95-5. Yeah, the streamer keeps 95% of the revenue, which is far better than any other notable platform has ever offered. And they have also made deals with major streamers, the most notable one being with XQC, valued around $100 million. I mean, that is bigger than most professional sports contracts. When the New York Times reported on it, they said it was a significant blow to the Amazon-owned site and a sign of its increasingly strained relationship with content creators. So that does not sound good. Now, Kick is also clearly losing money with all those expenses and low revenue, so they are essentially being kept afloat by Stake.com, again, raising all sorts of ethical questions regarding their ties to gambling. So, I don't know, live streaming services just don't seem to be profitable. They are all being supported by bigger companies that hope their investment will pay off in the future, but it's unclear exactly how that's going to happen. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Twitch? Have you used them as a streamer or a viewer, and how does it compare to streaming on YouTube or Kick? Are they unique enough to outlast all the others and remain on top, or do all of their issues leave an opportunity for others to catch up to them? What do they need to do to improve things and restore their reputation? Though, it's not like the others have the best reputations either, so a lot to consider. I also want to point out that this is not a complete list of all of their issues. That there have been controversies involving streamers being unfairly banned, or hot tub streams, and sexualized content, and so many others. These are just the ones that I feel are the most significant or impactful to the company itself. Please let me know if you think something should be added or subtracted from it, and any other thoughts you have about Twitch, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.